Praise the Lord, dear friend, Thomas Manton IV. The title of my message is Weapons of Our Warfare, Volume 2. The Lord's been talking to me about um, the power of victory that he's uh, given us to have. And I want to tell you prophetically, doctrinally, the Apostles' Doctrine, the Apostles' Creed, the Apostles' uh, Acts of the Holy Ghost from the beginning, you know, and Acts 10.38, Jesus of Nazareth, one about doing good who, and healed all that were oppressed of the devil because God's power was upon him and God was with him. So we're supposed to be that for other people, but we're also supposed to be that for ourselves. And I want to say this to you. Um, I wanted to say this to you that so many things racing through my mind, but I wanted to say this to you that the Lord wants you to suffer nothing. Okay? Suffering comes because of foolishness that happens in the world. And God can even, uh, you know, use it to refine you, make you better. But he wasn't the author of uh, uh, the, the acts of stupid people and crazy, evil, defeated, ready-to-be-roasted devils. No. No, sir. No, man. Uh, he would rather it everything be like what, what the old fantasy was, the utopian society, what many call this like thing, they call it the utopian society where it's utopia, you know, it's a state of whatever. You know, then in uh, the Eastern religion, what I mean, I mean, that, it comes from a good thought though. Then in the Eastern religion, you have nirvana, which they say that when you die is like the state of sleep or nothingness, which is totally stupid because we're alive forever. So since we're alive forever, this is our training for reigning time. <laughs> but I feel the anointing flowing here right now. This is our training for reigning time, and we need to get busy about living in victory, okay? I see people that get hit by things, and I was talking about this yesterday. The devil will hit people with something and, and, and stick them with it and stick it to them really good, you know? And uh, they just can't, they just are, are so uh, damaged by it. Now, that's okay for a season, but after a while, you got to say, hmm, oh, this is so boring. Now, wait a minute. You know, when you're yawning, you say, like, let me wake up from this and, um, and understand that God has total victory planned for us. Total victory. He wants you to suffer no lack, no loss, no sickness, no disease, no oppression, no denial, no delay. Hello? No um, suffering, no, uh, you know, uh, problem of any kind like that. He really, he really wants you to, to have the victory and be on top. I'm always reminded lately in the last many weeks and uh, uh, many days of this, this great scripture, uh, Revelation 5.12, it says the Lamb was slain to receive uh, uh, riches and power and glory and might and dominion and all of that blessing and honor you know so all of those attributes the things that he received you know as uh, an applause of the universe of God's creation and God given to him for his suffering then we should also receive that before, during, and after. So suffering is not the, uh, the the plan of God for you. You know, some people think it is. You know, they have this religious mentality, like the more you suffer, the more pious you become, or holy you become, or whatever. No, God doesn't want you to suffer any disease, any affliction, any failure, any loss. Listen to God's servant here. He doesn't want you to receive and, and to suffer any loss, failure, sickness, oppression, disease, malady, delay, distraction, denial, destruction, none of that is his plan for you or for me. Are you getting that? Now I'm setting the stage here because this is the day not only when we'll be delivered from everything like and walk in continuous perpetual deliverance and blessing and you know harvest and you know, all kinds of proceeds of things that are happening, all kinds of upgrades and increases and blessings and promotions and additions of um, great things to us. But we'll also be able to be blessed to be a blessing. 
next step, that's Genesis 12, 4. God blessed Abram to be a blessing, to be a big blessing to humanity, to be the father of nations. <laughs> Woo, we got to get busy about that, that work, you know, and not be sitting around. And lately, I don't know, I've noticed myself, I really celebrate and rejoice when people get blessed and get used of God and have success in ministry and in business and all of that. I really, I really feel it in my heart to say, bravo, more power upon you, to you, through you, from God, let it rip. You know, a lot of people, they hear somebody get blessed or they really get empowered or made wealthy or made, you know, uh, very useful in ministry or whatever, and they go, oh, you know, and they, they say kind of hallelujah, but they, in their heart, they, no, we need, we need to rejoice. Let me give you another key for breakthrough for yourself. You need to start loving people. You know why? Because it's a good seed. Love people. My, I feel the anointing here. My, I thought I was tired a few minutes ago, but kind of felt like I was, but now I'm getting majorly energized. I just... I just uh, traveled about 10,000 miles on a journey. 10,000 miles. That's a, that's a few, isn't it? And uh, you know, you cross over all the time zones and you feel this so high and then, you know. And, uh, but I feel great. Welcome everybody that's coming on. Please do share this. It's very powerful what the Lord is having me say here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad you're here. Now, Loving people is a seed, okay? The Bible also says follow peace with all men. So you want to try to make the peace and show peace and show grace and show God's love and presence and power. And that's also a seed, you know? Because God notices all these things we do because if he, I'll give you the word. Ephesians 6, 8 says, whatever good thing you do for another, God will do for you and make it happen for you. So you're storing up your, your, your spiritual accounts when you do that, the harvest will come back to you. And you want to have so much seed that when the harvest comes, you don't remember for whence come and stop. You're like, where did this harvest come from? Where did this blessing come from? You mu I must have done something good. Yeah, I've been doing good things every day, every single day for so many people. And I work to do that. You know, our job is to be a lover. Our job is to be a, I don't mean in the, in the worldly sense, I mean in the spiritual sense. A lover of people, you know what I mean? To bless them, to help them, to show them the way, to cause, help them to break through, to pray for them. And, and uh, uh, be a lover of people. And then uh, also a problem solver. You know, this is, these are, li listen, this is a little bit different here, but I'm, I'm, most people want to talk about the devil, which principality, the four crown prince, the ten horned giant that's going to rise in Europe, the antichrist, the beast, the false this and the false that, and the, this one and that, and this thing and that thing. And, and this kind of demon and that kind of demon and this kind of spirit, they have all these names, you know. And names of people also that were in the Bible that were indicative of bad things like Judas, Absalom and Jezebel and, you know, what they represent. And those are demonic things that came behind those living individuals that operate in those ways. And yes, that's real. And yes, that's there. And yes, that those need to be dealt with. But, uh, but I'm talking about a very practical thing you can do in your life to, listen to me, to entreat God, I know you haven't heard it taught like this, to entreat God to want to give you great deliverance. You're sowing seed, now guess what? The harvest buckets begin to come and just be, begin to be poured on you to overflowing, and now all of a sudden you're, 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 you're getting blessed this way and that way and that way, and you turn around and you say, you know what? What's my problem? Here's another key. This is something we really need to take more uh, uh, use of and utilization of and do is to help to help people that are in that are needy and, and afflicted because the bible says when you give to them the lord will repay you back and you want good health and good touch from the lord in isaiah 58 we see that when you do good for someone else you know for the afflicted you're fasting to help the afflicted and to uh, be a blessing to them then the lord will turn on your light in your night time so when you have a hard moment god will you know, cause somebody to be good to you. You want that to be happening 24 hours a day. I don't know about you, but I feel the need, especially lately, of like for, you know, affection and kindness and honor and celebration and, you know, needs being met and 
uh, problems being solved and anything that I have that I want to be done, I need it to be done. I, I feel the great urgency about that. I want it to be happening every day. I don't want to live a day and just like wait for something. I need some things to be like click, 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 bang, 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 step, 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 march, 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 let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Get it done, get it done, get it done, get it done. That's deliverance. Because, you know, the enemy, uh, the things that cause captivity and bondage get you stuck. When you're able to move, 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 and everything's moving, 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 I like to move it, move it. Hey! You know that song? And you're moving it, and it's moving for you. By the way, I don't know what that song is about, but it's a nice sound bite, isn't it? Like, uh, there's another one, like, da, 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 da. Are you ready for this? I like that. Who's like that one? I don't know the song. Don't go. We're not go. I don't I'm not interested. But I like that sound bite. Are you ready for this? Like, wake up, let's go. And moving, 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 yeah. And another song from that old guy from the 70s. I can't remember his name. It's good I don't remember the name, because I'm not into that kind of stuff, but... What was that song? That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh. Now, they're talking about something else, okay? We're not talking about that. It's a sound bite to get, you know, to trigger your imagination a little bit. This is the way I like it. This is the way I want it. This is the way it has to be. This is the thing that I need to be done. This is the thing that needs to flow and work. And how is that going to happen? And, and the Lord is very into us getting all that. This is part of success, but it's also part of deliverance. So another facet uh, in, in continuation of what I was doing yesterday, but in a different, uh, in a different realm of uh, uh, principles and revelations here, our seed that we're sowing by doing good things for others is also are also weapons do you understand because when you do good for somebody else you're going to get blessed i was thinking a few moments ago about a servant of god uh who who i know for 25 years man yeah 20 20 plus years anyway more than 20 years and uh i i, I watched him on the platform under the anointing and he was declaring and i do this a lot I do this so often when I'm preaching. To start declaring things like blessing this week, this time, is going to be the best day for you. It's going to be the best time of provision for you. God's going to give you this. God's going to give you that. God's going to give you the breakthrough. God's going to give you things. He's going to give you vehicles, houses, lands, cars, promotions, money, sales, uh, uh, increases, all kinds of things. And uh, now I'm thinking, okay, He's releasing that blessing, and because he's under the anointing, and he's decreeing it, God will begin to make it happen. Do you understand? But guess what? He's standing on the pulpit, and then the more people get blessed, and the more the whole order and arrangement of people around the world get blessed and get the breakthrough, proceeds are also coming from that. Come on now. Back to the work of God to help fuel it in the millions of dollars that it needs continuously and consistently to flourish and run. So like if nobody's getting blessed, then what's the point? But that's a problem solver right there. That's causing victory to happen for people and breakthrough to happen for people. And that's why I'm teaching this too, that I'm causing victory and breakthrough to happen for you. Why? Number one, so you can be blessed. So you can understand and know God and see his goodness and know that the enemy has nothing good for you and enemies have nothing good for you. Now, here's another thing, never try to, but at the end of the hour, everybody gets enriched by the whole thing being blessed. You understand? Including the preacher, including the prophet, including the apostle, including the pastor, including the ministry, including the work. As you flourish and shine, we all flourish and shine. I'm reminded of the scripture that says, when one in the body is hurting, everybody's hurting because we all have a, we all are each a joint to supply something you know from different parts and everyone's not the same you know everybody's not doesn't perform have the same body part or the same function in the body but we all need to flourish together and when one's out of sorts and out of sync everybody suffers why because the whole picture is losing because everything is not jointly together jointly fit together in place you know the weakest link and the chain snaps and then the vehicle the engine stops running or, or the machine stops turning and then it stops then production stops and all that and, and that's why we need a healthy, vibrant, blessed environment of everybody. And we all need to be helping each other to get there. 
But I, I, but I, but I, but I was just about to say, on the other hand, I've seen people that are devils and they just want to hurt you, make you feel bad, slander you, talk rubbish, uh, uh, criticize you, make up lies and stories and just wrong perceptions and all that. Those are enemies. And let me tell you something. Another, here's a warfare key. Silence is a key. Prayer and silence. Pray that God will destroy them and their works. I mean, especially their works, you know. Because you might let them live. Because God does yet, well, we don't always understand it, but he does yet have some mercy, even for fools. Anyway, his ways are not our ways. You can do it, do it how he wants. But, uh... But he's definitely, definitely to destroy their works. And also, also ignore them. Ignore them. Because you cannot negotiate with a devil. You know what I'm seeing? There's sometimes you want to talk your thing. I, I had this argument with a person some years ago. They wrote me something that was just ludicrous. I mean, something that somebody uh, said or whatever. They were saying we were getting like a million in our offering or something like that. And I thought, I wish. And I wrote them back like, like as, as if that's wrong or, you know, like... And I'm like, wow, when did you come up with that? I had someone else say that, I, that the, the, the president of a country paid me $100 million to prophesy uh, that he would be elected because he knew I had the hearts of the people and a million people would watch and then vote for him. You know, the prophecy that I gave, which actually happened, but uh, I, ne I never saw that guy in that time. He didn't give me a cotton-picking dollar or, or anything. So, I mean... And I thought, I just laughed. I thought, yeah, well, let it be so, you know. If that's the way the Lord would want to move out. Uh, but, I would, but I wouldn't take anything for the ministry. You can't buy it from me, man. This is not for sale. This is holy. All right? But if someone wants to come around the corner and be a blessing, I don't know. I have to pray at that time and see what to do. But there was, no, there was nothing that happened like that. But, so I started having an argument with this woman. I thought I'm really going to fix her. She's the husband of a, she was the wife of a, a husband that was a worship leader. Uh, and he was actually doing some music for us. And, and uh, uh, you know, they just were like, seemed nice. I even, you even see them on some of my, uh, some video way back. I think I have one or two messages where they're introducing some people, giving the testimonies or something. But then they, the wife went crazy, started coming up, and they started talking rubbish. And then they got disqualified, and God just, you know, pushed them out the door. You know, I'm nice. I was nice. God just... Didn't like what they were doing. So I started having this argument, thinking I'm going to correct this woman and set the, the thing straight, or whatever they're saying, which is totally ridiculous. I mean, my Lord. That's why it really got me. I'm like, oh, come on now. You, 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 you got to be kidding me. And, uh, and sure enough, every time I wrote back, she wrote back something more heated and more ludicrous. And then more and then more. And I had to stop and say, you know what? I don't know how long it's going to take me to win this little battle here <laughs> because she just won't relent i mean it's just like like you you have like a like like something coming up from the earth like a so like there was a spring and there was mud in it and it started to come up through a hole and begin to leak a little bit and you want to just like put a cap on it and make it stop or push the dirt back to stop it but then anytime you like exert any attention to it the hole gets bigger and it comes up more. You see the analogy? And it's like you're not putting out the, 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 the flow or the fire by saying anything. So some things you just need to ignore them. Pray that God will shut it down when there's enemies. And he will answer by fire. And that'll be that. And silence cannot be misquoted. You know, anything you... Anything you tell to a, a devil, you know, like even if you're correcting them, they don't get corrected. You know why? Because they're a fool. So, you know, the scripture, the proverb says, answer not a fool lest you become like them. But then there's times also when someone needs to be answered, said so don't, you know, correct them because you, you don't want them to like revel in their folly to think that they're right. So an explanation or like something needs to be given. But, but, not, but not, not often. So you have to discern which is the case in that scenario. Because some people are misinformed and they need to have some right information. Other people are just completely off because they're a fool and they have this uh, wrong perception or whatever and they're misguided and deluded and, you know, demonized, demonically so even. And then, 
you just have to say, you know what? Nothing I'd say, even though it'd be brilliant and truthful, it wouldn't help them. So just block them out, cut them off. This is another weapon of the warfare. You wanna, here's another one. You wanna keep peace, you have to limit access to yourself. You have to be careful with access. I'll tell you, after I've seen a few things, a few people that come up with nonsense, I just wanna shut off some access, you know, and like take a few steps back from direct access from the public because they can really disturb your, you know, and sometimes God will, anyway, sometimes communication is helpful to use gauge situations and all that, but you really don't want everybody bothering you and being able to be in your direct space and place and space so you can have your peace. So have different levels of things. You need different phones, you need a different phone number, you have a business phone number, a private phone number, and then your business number, you can put it away, let the, let the voicemail take the calls, blah, blah, look at it when you want to, and then respond accordingly. And there's lately features of things called block and delete. Those are good. Block on WhatsApp, block on contact, you know, contacts, block on uh, social medias. Just block out every fool. I, 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 I used to, also years ago, used to just dialogue back and forth with some people. And they, I can't remember one time when it ever worked right. Maybe once or twice. Uh, but it's because the person was sane on the other side. They were a little bit like uh, caught up in their in their opinion about something, which I had something to say about that, and then that made them mad. But uh, the, in the end of the road, at the end of the chain, <laughs> The tether ball, the ball was on the tether, it was correct, it was attached correctly. So, I mean, to some intelligent life was there, you know, good spirit somewhere there. So, uh, it was able to be like that, you know, made okay and it ended up right. But that's only like, you know, there was like one of them was a really annoying servant of God or two and misguided on something or just really, real opinionated and brash about it something about ministry and I thought no 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 this is not right so I decided to write something bigger and the guy got like you know miffed that I you know gave a sharp opinion back I said hey here now it wasn't my opinion it was about the word of God and uh, which really wins the argument every time anyway regardless if someone accepts it or not and that's a good thing I can remember but I, I mean I've had Lady passes one. God used me to prophesy that Donald Trump would be the president two years before the election almost in 2015. In June of 2015, the election wasn't until November 2016, was it? Yeah, so it's a year and a half, okay? A year and a half, yeah. A year and a half. And, oh Lord, some of these pastors, they call themselves pastors and they were cussing me out. Imagine. And I thought, you're a pastor? So I had to end up just blocking it, blocking it. And all the t energy that I took to, uh, you know, converse was wasted time because they were totally deluded in the way they were thinking. You understand what I'm saying? So after that, I've, uh, and then we put out prophecies for the nation of an election outcome that was going to come and of course the opponents who were evil evilly twisted you know they write all kinds of nasty stuff in many countries this happened and then i don't have time to read them all or just i look at the tone see this wrong block 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 the leaf block the leaf block the leaf and uh, and then i got this new policy of zero tolerance for anything offensive coming toward me i don't receive it you want to talk rubbish it's going back on your head. You want to get nasty? It's coming back on your head. You want to be judgmental and be a, a fa Pharisee, want to see, couldn't see, want to be, sad you see, kind of idiot? Oh, back on you, man. Back on you. Back on you. And uh, no, no, no. Now, now, here, now here's what I started out with, and this is really, really a good point. And I feel it circling back around again. God doesn't want you to be belittled by anyone, nor suffer by anyone. He doesn't want you to be, have any negativity coming toward you from anyone. He doesn't want you to uh, suffer any ailment, sickness, low self-image, self-esteem problem, or anything like that. He just doesn't want that for you at all. He never ordained it. 
You know, a weapon of our warfare, as I said yesterday, and, and now I'm in volume two, weapons of our warfare, volume two, the God's weapons of warfare give us victory. Yes, that's the title. And the Lord said, uh, the Lord said, uh, every high thing, haughty thing, that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ, who Christ is to you and to me. He's our Lord. We're his servants. We are royalty in the kingdom of God. So nobody has any doggone right to try to disturb your peace. Follow peace with all men. They don't obey it sometimes, so you have to obey it. Follow peace with all men. Guess what? All men is also me. I'm going <laughs> to... You didn't think of that. Did you? I was, it, it, all men, you think of always somebody else. No, it's also you. You need to have your peace and not have it be disturbed. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. A psalm, one of the psalms said, uh, you go out with, be led forth with peace and go out with joy, and the trees of the field shall clap their hands. You know that scripture in the psalms? I can't remember which psalm it is, in the 50s somewhere. But the Lord, I think it was in the 50s somewhere. But the Lord said, uh, uh, the trees of the field will clap their hands. Now what that means is nature will rise to celebrate your victory. Nature will rise to celebrate and give you your blessings when you have peace and joy. And God is happy because peace and joy are from the nature of God. Weapons of our warfare. Get your peace. Stay in it. Weapons of our warfare. Find the keys of confessing the word to get the victory and the breakthrough you need. Weapons of our warfare. Find out how to entreat God for his healing. What do you need to do? Weapons of our warfare. Be kind to everyone, because then someone will be kind to you. Weapons of our warfare. Solve problems for other people, because when you have a problem, it'll be solved for you. And har harvest will come on the sea. Weapons of our warfare. Be generous, because a generous soul shall be like a, like a well-watered garden. Someone that's generous to others, their life will be like a garden that is well watered. Some sow the seed, some water, God gives the increase. That's another verse of scripture. So you want to be one that uh, is always living on top and always living in the victory. People do, are, are, are still ignorant of something. Ignorant is a word that means un, unknowing, unknowing, you know, unlearned, unknowing of, of, a, of, of a fact or a truth that can liberate you, but you don't know it. And the Lord is... Uh, uh, doesn't want us to be ignorant. You know, Paul said, brethren, I would not to have you be ignorant of the devices of the enemy uh, or also of spiritual things because he wants you to be flowing in the spirit and be on top. On top, on top, on top, on top, it's good. Instead of on bottom, on bottom, on bottom, on bottom. Maybe there's some places where that's pleasurable. But kind of a joke. But uh, on top is where it's at in life. Because God said He wants us to be above only and not beneath. In in in, in the sphere of, of like living, in the sphere of your livelihood and your life, everything needs to be prosperous, profitable, advantageous, procreation, provision, pro the mission, people, pro the thing. You know, when there's celebration and, and unity in like a tribe or like a covenant put together of people that God has joined together divinely, what we call divine connections, then there's power to begin to create something new that wasn't created before. And God wants us. He wants us to be there. He wants us to be there. He wants us to be in that. And the principle of that is where when Jesus went to Nazareth, in Mark chapter 6, he couldn't do any great healings. He didn't say he wouldn't, he said he couldn't because they short-circuited the power of God by their unbelief. But then, the Lord took him out of there, their craziness, took him down a, 
uh, Capernaum, and at Capernaum they had heard good things. There was honor there. There was a stirring up of 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 like readiness and receptivity from the people there. You know, and the way he went there, and the power of God fell, and miracles beyond, 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 beyond began to happen. Beyond measure, beyond imagination, miracles began to happen. But in Nazareth, they couldn't because people had unbelief. So he wasn't, the, the people weren't clicking right with him. But in Capernaum, wow. It was like, it was like kaboom. It was like ka combustion. It was spiritual fire and energy and glory. The people were pulling on the glory and the anointing and getting healed, delivered, set free. Devils coming out of people. Diseases leaving people. Miracles happening for people. Oh my God. Be because of the celebration and honor factor. So, ce so, so Jesus went where he, he had to go where he was celebrated for the miracles to flow instead of where he was merely tolerated. Nazareth, Mark 6, where the miracles didn't flow because the people had they were, they were nasty. They were mocking him. Oh, now you think you're the Messiah or somebody. Wow, oh, we knew you before when you were a kid. Now, look at you now. You're like the Messiah. Or like, what are you, crazy? Or, you can't talk like that about God and be all questionable and judgmental. And all of a sudden, God's going to come down and, and just touch you and bless you. No, he'll leave you. He'll leave, he'll leave people, not you, but if, if you're not like that, of course. But I hope you're not. But uh, in case anybody is, but people that are like that, God will leave them. So, a uh, weapon of our warfare, another key to deliverance, a real key to deliverance. Another key to deliverance is the presence of God. Oh Lord, I feel the anointing. I feel Him here. I bet He's been on my, He's been on me for many days. I just came back from a long trip. I had a major visitation last Friday, March first at three o'clock in the afternoon and the Lord dropped a uh, revelation from heaven as he came and stood in my in my uh, hotel room there and for, for an, about two hours spoke to me more than an hour I dictated uh, and I've had it all typed uh, transcribed uh, digitally and now I'm ed working on the editing for the final document and we'll also have it translated into the language of the, of the nation and circulate it throughout the whole country to millions of people. Very excited about that. It's a new season for that country. The president that we prophesied would win won the election. A uh, major uh, landslide victory. And, and people didn't really expect that he would win like that. In fact, he was attacked before uh, the thing. The enemy, the enemy didn't want the enemy didn't want the thing to happen. And uh, the Lord just worked it out for the good of the people that um, he would become the president and the Lord spoke to me about him also that I'll there's some further things I can't announce now really good about the president and about me and about great things to happen in that nation so uh, it's been an interesting few days now this is a story of my life this is going on all the time but um, those events happen. A historic thing was given. And the enemy can can react, you know. He doesn't he don't like it. <laughs> but what's he gonna do? He's defeated. He try his best, but he only has a few straws to pull and then he fizzles out again like a popped balloon, the air coming out of a popped balloon. So uh, let, let it let us never be weary in well doing because we're gonna reap. Let us never be weary of well-doing because we're a blessing to the nations. Never let us be weary of well-doing because God's hand is upon us to bless humanity. <laughs> and cause uh, the earth and the world to become a better place to live because we were here. We're advancing the kingdom. Millions of souls must be saved. Millions of people must be healed. Millions of people must be delivered. Millions of people must be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Millions, even billions. Can it happen? Yes, it can. If God has enough labor and says the harvest is so great, but the laborers are so few. So God wants to use you, my precious friend. He wants to use me more. He wants to use you more. And I love something uh, a great general uh, of the faith 
who's gone on to be with the Lord, he made a statement. He said, people are going to give account for the call that they had in their life. So we need to really be busy, really working in our calling. It's really not an option. It's important that we do it. You say, what is my calling? I, I, I want to help you find out. I want to ch challenge you enough that you can, uh, you can uh, just... Um, there's some demons walking around here now, man. Praise God. One guy just walked by. He looked like Igor. Or, uh, come on. If I hit the camera in the back, you would have seen him walk by. He's looking like this all twisted. Hey, devil. <laughs> Listen up, devil. <laughs> Hallelujah. The more with us than there are with them. Angels. You know, I had this young kid teenage man, boy, and another, a little bit older guy, son of a great uh, church leader, he, he they, they had prophetic words for me in this conference, and one said, he said he saw an angel, huge angel standing behind me, one, he had a sword in one hand and a shield in the other, and he said, he's with you all the time, I thought, oh son, that's so beautiful, it's so purposeful, that word, it's so, it's so nice to hear, it's so nice to be reminded, of course we know that, but it's so good to that you saw that vision that the Holy Spirit showed you. I mean, he really cares for us and loves us, loves me, you know, and loves his work and what we're doing. And then he said, another one said, I saw that you in the hand of God. God's just holding you in his hand all the time. And you can never, like, uh, be moved out of it, you know. And the Lord is holding you up in everything you're doing. I thought, oh, bravo. These are two teenagers prophesying. I thought, this is great. Let the Holy Ghost flow on all the people. You know, remember Moses said, I wish that all that God's people would be prophetic. Not pathetic, but prophetic. Really speaking, the, the words of life coming through people. Good things, powerful. And God wants you to have deliverance, my friend. He wants you to be delivered. He wants you to be the head and not the tail. He wants you to be wealthy and broke. He need, wants you to be above only and not beneath. He wants you to be successful, not lagging behind or in failure. He wants you to be clear in your imagination, in your mind, in your dreaming, in your action, in your work, in your goal setting, and what you're doing. He doesn't want you to be like derided or spaced out or troubled or wondering. He doesn't want your self-esteem to be down. He doesn't want you to have any fear. My God, I'm preaching here. He doesn't want you, thank you, Lord. He doesn't want you to have, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He doesn't want you to be down and out in any way, shape, or form. And that is the word of the Lord. So the weapons of our warfare come from God. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And they give us the victory. I know you've been blessed by this message. Share it with everyone. And I'll see you here on the next broadcast. I'm going to continue in this. I love you. My friends, if you could put my... Uh, I see my friend Frank on there. If you could put... Bless you, man of God. I, if you could put... Uh, I see a few other people in there. Forgive me, I'm not looking at the... Uh, is that MG on there? And RS, I'm doing initials. I think I, I see you popped up on my frame above, but I'm not looking at the comments because I just want to preach and flow here. But let me tell you, again, God has totally given you the victory. Thanks for putting my uh, details on the screen, especially the 747 number. I want people to call that number, and then I get a text. Uh, inside North America, of course, it's very easy for me to mail it out. Out of the country, I don't know yet, but which we're going to try to set up some way of digitally uh, making it downloadable plus all the books that I'm writing and all the other things that I'm, I'm, I'm working on we want to make those digitally available that uh, uh, you know people all over the planet can tune into the voice of God that's speaking through us here to the nations of the world I'm Thomas Manton the fourth I love you my information is on the screen if you'd like to send me a prayer request you can if you'd like to give a testimony, you can. If you'd like to give an offering, you can. If you'd like to sow into this work, you can. If you'd like to join us for prayer, you can. If you'd like to be praying also for us, I welcome that, if it's the right kind of prayer. Uh, if you'd like to know more about uh, you know, how to be connected with us and the information I have, you can have more of that, you can. You can also private inbox me here on Facebook. That's a really easy way. Just click message on the top of the page and uh, send me a message. And please do put your telephone number in there and also your email also. And I have a reason for asking for that, that we can be in communication. Please do that. 
and the, all the other ways of writing to me and connecting with me. Thank you so much for being my friend and partner. And I'm glad to be a, a, a help to you, a mentor, a coach, a friend, an intercessor, a pastor, a prophet, as God has made me, uh, that to bless the nations of the world with his power flowing through us. Love you so much. Thomas Matthew the Fourth. more later. Talk to you on the next broadcast. I'm praying for you for total, total victory. Father, in, in Jesus' name, healing, deliverance, success, finances, whatever your people need, you are our provider. You are our healer. You are the Lord our peace, shalom. You are the Lord our healer, Rophe. You are the Lord our righteousness, Sitkanu. You are the Lord our provider, Jireh. You are the Lord, our King of kings and Lord of lords. And we thank you. We worship you. We thank you for your grace and your goodness in Jesus' name. I love you. Talk to you again real soon. Make it a great day. Make it a great week. What you want is available. And all the freedom that you want from God is available to you by the power of the Holy Ghost and through the Word of God. In Jesus' name, love you.